right, here we are with the 1840 again, and it needs a wheelbarrow. The only reason we found that is because the last video. It's a good thing I got you to do wheelies. <laughs> because yeah, you can see it flopping around. <laughs> and sure enough, it's toast. And I am not looking forward to this job one bit. Here we go. So you can wash it and have nice wet mud. We'll call it mud, not mud. <laughs> or you can just some leave it. Some of it is mud. <laughs> some of it is mud, not all of it is mud. All right, we're just backing the tensioner bolt off here. We probably should have done this before we took those other nuts out, but whatever, they're all coming apart in the heat. So that slides your whole axle forward to tighten the chain, inside chain, inside, like a drive chain. I want all that effort to grind that for you, so. <laughs> it's only the front ones that are tensioned? No, there's one back too. So there's a tensioner that pulls the back one back, the front one forward? Front one forward, yeah. Okay. So, something like that, and now we can get that chain off. Looks like fun, eh? Um, torches? <laughs> <laughs> so that, the chain has to come off, then you can get this off, then you can get out the wheel bearings. Some have a cover on the top, you can work on the inside. Those are the 18 C's. Okay. The trick is to pop the the whole axle help yep. off of the, the studs there. And to get this plate off. And get the plate off and then just slide the whole thing back. Now you got lots of room. I think I want a glove because I'm sure there's lots of sharp edges on that. And that's a really nice looking oil one. Maybe we should change that too. It's kind of tight, Rich. You must have more girly hands. <laughs> so, I had the little glove inside that yet because my girls are welding. I gave Kevin my old racing gloves. You want to help or just stand here and commentate? Well, that's normally what we used to for me. <laughs> just like that. So the front ones are where your park lock pins go in. And those things are notorious for not working. And the other thing is, is there's a boot on the other side. So this is where all the water gets into your chain cases. It's not a very good design, but they ran like this forever. As long as lubricated with something. Yeah, so while they're supposed to have 1030 in them. Really? Yeah, but we've been putting uh, Hytran in because Hytran will take the water better. Nice. All you're doing is lubricating the, uh, Chain. the chains because the bearings yeah. are all packed to grease. So. Yeah. That just sets your preload, right? Yeah. yeah. There's no preload on it now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nice, you have right-handed gloves. You're so fussy. Bring your own shit. <laughs> Get your own stuff covered in old milky, dirty, stinky shit oil. <laughs> oh, music. This off. Oh, they're fine. Oh, yeah. They're fine. See, told you that was a problem. Plastic baler twine. It gets into the bearings. It rips out the seals. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right. You weren't driving it hard enough. If you can melt the plastic, then it acts as a lubricant. You're just not driving it hard enough. This is why you don't let twine get wrapped up on your axles, because you get to do this job. Okay, it's in there. Pop the seal. I'm gonna get in there. But it'll make for a great video. <laughs> There's no bearing left. No, <laughs> that is the bearing race. No, the, the cup, the yeah, the cup is at least we're not into the housing. Yeah. Right? Thank you, YouTube viewers. Please continue <laughs> to comment what's broken on the outside of the machine. You, and, and to Kevin's defense is when you're sitting in the cab, you can't see your tires. So you don't know that that wheel bearing's gone unless and, you and check for it. so much racket, you really don't know what's going on outside. Oh, that's still like new. No. We'll just wash that and reuse it. Oh yeah. So you can try and punch them out from the other end or you can run a little bead a weld on there and it'll shrink the cup and then it'll fall out. It's whatever you want. We're gonna punch them out because right. we can get through. Here's my punch. I'll give you five bucks if you can tell what that is. Moments later. More moments later. Two hours later. Mm -hmm. It's because you're a case guy. That's the lower 
uh, pin see. that the three-point hitch goes on on like an old, 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 old John Deere, and then it like bends up against something to, to see. Duty. No, it's not, but it makes for a good punch. It's a big job to change that stupid thing, and it's a really dumb design on John Deere's part. You guys comment what model that's out of. kit you can buy the whole kit i thought you had to buy it all separate but it comes as a kit and uh you can get this kit for 85 dollars canadian canadian from the case nice dealer or you can get for 55 dollars from a and i so i would like you to guess where i got mine <laughs> all right well rich doesn't have a set of bearing uh so we use the old bearing to Put the new one in, but make sure you put it in like this. I had it in the other <laughs> way around, and then you got no lip to knock the old one out. So you can just use the bearing, knock it in, it works great. Go like that. Perfect. If you use a punch, a lot of times you'll end up chipping the top of the bearing. It's because you buy cheap china bearings. If when we did wheel bearings, we'd never use an installer. We always banged them in with a, with a punch. I've never chipped one once. Yeah? Here, go pack this bearing, would you? <laughs> yes, I will, I will pack the bearing. <laughs> so Kevin's got these fancy wheel bearing packers, but he's got a lot more money than I do because he's a farmer. I think so. they cost $15. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have $15. I, I got a palm. So you just take it, you just grab it, put a little bit, in between until you see the grease start squeezing in between the rollers. Oh. See it start to come up and you got the grease everywhere and you're good to go. My issue with bearing wheel bearing packers is that you have to fill the center of the thing full of grease and then you either waste that grease or you leave it and then that grease gets full of dirt and sand and then you're putting that into your next bearing. Oh, I just get all that grease and just goop it in there. I do it the right way. <laughs> you can do it however you want. Give me a couple minutes. <laughs> I'd have it together and be on the road by now. <laughs> You're still packing it for his bearing. Yeah. All right, so this is a skid steer, not a car. So we want a little bit of preload on the bearing. So you put a little pressure on this nut, and I always give it a little a couple wraps of the hammer just to make sure everything is seated. And that actually doesn't feel too bad if you ask me. It's also low speed, right? You're not doing 120 mile an hour. No, you want just a little bit of preload. That's not bad, it might be a little much, but we'll back it off a hole and see what that feels like. Yeah, that's better. Right there. That's where we want it. You're videoing me putting this old cutter key in here? No, it's brand new. <laughs> uh, Aaron will edit the part where it shows that it's bent. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for installation. This uh, might go missing. <laughs> Every time Milwaukee comes up with another tool, I'm like, this is my favorite tool. And then they come up with something else, I'm like, this is my favorite tool. Why are you cleaning a brand new O-ring? <laughs> 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 some machines get new parts, some don't. This is, this is why we got a full. <laughs> she might have been in that rag. Oh, shit. We're dumb. Oh, you didn't put the yeah. plate on it. Plate I on told it. you that. I told you that you should have put that plate on first. Now you have to go and find another cotter pin. <laughs> That's not gonna work, is it? Just cut it. Yeah. This is why we make these videos. So you can watch it in full and realize, don't do what we do. But it's also dark out. After supper, nothing good. Just watch cartoons. I 
bet you ten dollars we will see a comment on that. Just because of that, we're not even gonna edit that out. Now we got it. I think I got it right. Oh yeah, first time. It's almost like I've done this before. It always goes faster the second time. Yeah, but I have a feeling that this cotter key is... You're, you're gonna snap it? I have a nail. Or we can get Vince to just weld it. Yeah, let's just weld it. If that falls off, it's gonna be an issue. Yeah, that's true. All right, so to put the chain around the gear is a little bit tricky, and there really is no direct way to tell you how to do it. Um, the chain needs to go around the gears. Uh, it's not going to slip off of the drive in the middle of the machine, but if it is on the teeth and hangs down past the back of the gear, it's not gonna go on. If your studs are hitting, it's not gonna go on. If the bottom of it is on an angle, it's not gonna go on. It really is just trial and error. Grit your teeth. If it doesn't work, walk away, try again. But at the end of the day, have the axle all the way towards the center of the machine. Have as much of the chain on the gear as you can and then slide it forward. Remember to have the O-ring in place and the plate in place and good luck. You gotta goop the plate up against the machine and then we did forget to put a little bit of grease around the O-ring to keep the O-ring in place. It is what it is. It's done. All right, what's the torque of those? Six, um, six second nuggets? I don't know when that impact rattles four <laughs> times. Yeah. All right, well, you just want to get these on there, not tight, a little snug, we're gonna snug them up, and then you gotta put the uh, adjusting bolts in here, slide this forward to snug that chain. Can you over tighten it? Um, yeah, I guess you could, because then you'd be putting all kinds of side load on that oral motor, which would not be good. You want to tighten it so it just kind of rocks, just a tiny little bit. The wheel is supposed to run like, if you can rock the tire back and forth that far, that's about what you want. So when you get down here, it's very dangerous. What are you torquing them to? I'm torquing them to 100, just for fun. Just for fun. Lock tight. New. No. <laughs> Never sees? Rust sees. <laughs> Give it a little chain check here. Yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. I like it. <laughs> we can live with that. No, that's what you want. Just a little. Yeah. Lug nuts are torqued too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is it for this repair. Maybe we'll fix the creek on another video. The creek? And it drives by itself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll get the pins fixed. I don't know, but it should, when you let go of the handles, it should stand still. Yeah, yeah. Next video. Hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, what did that take us? Two hours? Yeah. Well, two hours. Um, yeah. And, uh, okay. Go out there, fix it. Keep the twine out there. Yeah, keep, keep the baler twine out of it. There we go.